Hey there, thanks for watching. This is a, a series of videos on text mining in RapidMiner. This is the third video in the series. Uh, previously I talked about um, loading text into RapidMiner in video one, and then processing text in RapidMiner in video two. And today I'm gonna to talk about word vectors, uh, frequent word sets, and association rules. And my name's Neil McGuigan, and you can visit my blog at vancouverdata.blogspot.com. So what I'm going to do is um, I have a data, database of uh, job postings from a popular job board. Uh, they're all in HTML like this, and it's about 400 of them. And what uh, we're going to do is uh, load it in, process it, and then look for uh, rules that are common in all the documents. So for example, we found this one here where uh, positive team player um, is a pretty uh, common uh, set of words, okay? And there's a bunch of other ones as well. Okay, so uh, customer service is also important. So I'm going to show you a, a step through the, the steps into uh, to figuring that out. Okay, so the first step is um, is to read the database. Okay, it grabs uh, 400 uh, rows, uh, one one text field, and each row is a uh, is a document from the job posting board. And then we can use the process documents from data operator. Okay, and double click to go inside there. What we got is the extract content uh, operator, which is from the web mining plugin in the HTML processing folder, and that just strips out HTML and leaves everything else. Then tokenize uh, splits the word into uh, splits the document into words, and we put everything in lowercase so that it can find uh, similar similar words. Filter out very common words, and then filter out uh, single character uh, words. Okay, now in the process documents from data uh, operator, we want to create a word vector. Okay, so what that means is. Um, if you have a document with say 10 words, it'll uh, create one column in a table for each word and then put a zero uh, or put a one for that uh, word if the word exists in that document. And then it does that for every document. Uh, and then it puts a zero if that word's not in there. So I'm just gonna run through it and show you. Okay, so we had 400 examples, which are the 400 documents, okay, and it's created 2,611 attributes, which are the columns in the table. Okay, so each um, column is a word from one of the documents, okay? And then it puts a one if that word exists in the document and a zero if it doesn't. So in this document here, um, the word ability is in there. Okay, but then this document here, the word ability is not in there. Okay, so then it, so yeah, every row is the document, and every um, word from every document is in that, is in a column. And you need, uh, so that's what a word vector is. Uh, there's different numbers you can put in here, uh, but for association analysis, what you want is to use the binary term occurrences, because it needs, you can only use ones and zeros for association analysis. Okay, but you can also use term occurrences uh, for other analysis, which uh, is the number of times the, the word appears in the document. And then there's other ones, um, TFIDF and term frequency, which I'll show in the next video. Okay, um, turn off meta information because it's not useful here in the database context. Keep the text just so you can uh, keep an eye on things later. And then prune uh, using absolute with minimum of two, which will just get rid of words that only appear in, in one document, so they're not going to be uh, too much use. Um, and the numerical to uh, binomial operator is required here because uh, the FP, the future, future FP growth operator requires um, the terms in binomial form, so I'll just step through that.
Okay, so it's turned everything to binomial, which means it's now true or false, which is what the FB growth operator wants. Okay, so FB growth will turn, um, we'll look for, for common item sets in the uh, word vector table. So if, uh, you know, full and time both show up commonly in a document, then that'll uh, it'll show that here. Okay, so generally it's a good idea to have the fine minimum number of item sets. Um, so it'll try, it'll start from, you know, whatever support number you choose, but if it can't find um, a number of item sets, it'll sl slowly lower the support value. What we're getting is 5% here, just so we can find a lot of uh, different item sets. Let's play that. Okay, so this is the frequent item sets uh, results. So what you see here is support. Now support is the proportion of documents that include the item set. So the word please appears in about 60% of all the documents. Okay, we can scroll down here a bit. Okay, now we've got some bigger item sets here. So we've got please experience. So please and experience occur in about 40% of the documents. So that's one item set with, uh, with at least two terms. Okay, then it's going to find some uh, more, some multiple item sets as well. So we got some three ones here. So please, resume, and cover appear in about 10% of the documents. Okay, so this is kind of like a little something like correlation for uh, for words in documents, basically which words that appear together frequently. Okay, and then from that you can create rules, such as um, you know if full and time appear together in a document, then you know the wage might be higher, or if um, you know, computer and skills appear together, then, you know, it might be a certain category of job. So what we're going to do is set the, uh, the create association rules operator, okay? And then set the confidence, okay? And the confidence is the proportion of documents that include the conclusion given the premise. So I'll show you that in a sec. And then we'll set the confidence about 95%. And then run that. Okay, and here's the results from the association rules. Um, <clears throat> just found about 720 association rules. Okay, so one of them example is position years and experience often occur together. Okay, and then what you want to do is basically look for interesting ones. So one measure of interestingness is lift. Okay, so work and fast paced or work fast and paced uh, often occur together. Um, you know, lower mainland, that's basically uh, what, uh, part, what they call the larger part of Vancouver. You know, email cover letter. And then you can also basically filter it by the conclusions. So fast and paced comes with work. Okay. One interesting one is team. So they, um, you know, the job uh, job posting people on, on the sweat website are looking for you know team players that work in a positive uh, environment okay you can also look at a graphical version of these rules as it gets a little bit crowded so it's good to filter out here This is, the, this is called the ISOM layout. There's other ones too, such as circle. So it's like that, but ISOM's uh, nice and compact. Okay, but this basically says, you know, these terms often appear together in multiple documents. So, um, and basically what you want to do is step through a number of them and see if there's any uh, anything interesting and useful. Now, um, you know, one famous example is the beer and diapers uh, one where 
a large grocery store, actually it was Teradata, I believe, they um, working on behalf of a grocery store, they found that, you know, between 5 p.m. and 7 p.m. on Fridays that they sold a lot of beer and diapers together, which is probably because, you know, husbands would come in after work and uh, pick up the diapers for the kids, but also buy a, buy a six-pack of beer. So it can be useful in terms of finding out what, uh, what things co-occur. This one's a little bit crowded. I'm just going to up the uh, confidence criteria. So yeah, this one, they, um, you know, please send your uh, e email, your, your cover letter and resume. And the team one. Okay, so that's basically how association rules work. Uh, next up, we're going to look at um, the next video. We're going to look at document similarity, calculating the similarity between documents. And then in the next video after that, we're going to look at uh, automatically categorizing documents. Okay, thanks so much.